Hey everyone, I'm Kyle, and in this week's Python programming tutorial, we're going to be learning all about how to make our own custom classes in Python. By now, I've pretty much beaten to death the idea that Python is an object-oriented programming language, and we started this series by learning about all kinds of objects that are native to the Python programming language. For example, things like integers, things like arrays, things like sets are all objects that you can manipulate with things that are called methods. So for example, the array object has an append method. Now we're going to be learning about classes, which is how you as a user can define and create your own custom objects that have their own attributes and their own methods. So you can represent different types of data in different ways or even create, well, who knows, the sky's the limit. There are so many awesome things that you can do with classes, which is really why object-oriented programming languages such as Python are so powerful. So like, what even is a class? How do you define it? What would you do with it? We're going to see that right now. Because classes can be kind of abstract, I think the best way to learn how to use classes is to jump right in and actually make an example class. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you through how to make a simple uh, sample class. And the very first thing you need to do is define the class, and you do that by using the keyword class. And then you give, need to give your class some kind of name. And this is the general name, um, and then you can make a specific instances with different um, uh, different names uh, later on. So I'm going to make a class called person. And then, so it's very important that your class general name starts with a capital letter, and then you put a colon after that, and you can see it changes color, because Python has recognized that we're defining a class. So what do I mean by a general name? You can think about, there are other objects in Python that are inherent to it. So for example, we have integers. An integer is a, a type of object, or a class. And an integer with a capital I has a whole bunch of different instances. So for example, 35 is an instance of an integer, or 37 is another instance of an integer. And so I'm going to create a class person, and then later on we can create instances of person, such as Kyle, or Sandy, or whatever uh, specific instance we want. Okay, so after we've told Python that we're defining the class, it indents into the body of the class, and this is where we're going to start writing methods. Now what a method is, is that is a function that uh, belongs to that class, so like a function that is inherent. So for example, an array is a class in Python, and it has a few different functions, one of them being append. So when you call array.append, uh, that array method that is built into uh, I'm sorry, that append method that is built into the array knows to add whatever element you have onto the end of that array. So that's just an example. So you can start writing methods just like you would with any other function, but of course they're inside the body of the class. Now the very first method that you must, must, must have for any class is an init method or initialization. So you do that by putting two underscores, then writing init, then two other underscores. And then, of course, you have your arguments here, just like any other function. Even if you have no other methods, you must at least have an, in, an initialization for every single class, because this is, as you may guess, the function or method that sets up the actual class itself. And even if you don't have any other arguments that you want to pass in, the one argument that you must pass in for every single method is self, which tells Python that this method belongs to uh, this class. So then when you symbolically call this method on instances of a class, the Python knows to link it back to the correct instance. Like I said, this all sounds very abstract, but hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense uh, in just a few minutes after we're a little bit deeper into programming. So then this will indent, and this is where we can start uh, storing information about our class, and these are called attributes. And an attribute is simply put a variable that belongs to a class. So this instance of person will have certain attributes that go along with it, that are inherent to it. So for example, if I was a person, I might have height, and I can define that as self.height. Remember to always put self in front of all of our attributes. And uh, that equals, let, let's say, 1.8 meters. We can have uh, self.hair equals brown. And you can treat these just like variables so they can take all of the data types that would normally belong to variables. And let's say I have a self.friends, and then we can put a set in there of uh, just a few people. And so this is all great and dandy. So we have a class of a person, and we have an initialization class that stores 
a few pieces of information about our person. Now you can also do some other stuff, some like uh, like function type stuff in this init, but for this simple example this is good enough for now. So before we go on and make any more methods, I want to show you exactly how you would then go to use this class in the context of a program. So as I mentioned before, you can't just use the class directly, you have to create an instance of the class. So person is a general word for, you know, people, and Kyle is an instance of a person. So I'm a type of person. So I can make an instance called Kyle, and I would do that by saying Kyle equals uh, person, and then I can do open and close parentheses because we're not actually taking any inputs as of right now. And now Kyle is an instance of person. So Kyle takes the place of self in all of these expressions wherever I use Kyle. So for example, I can say uh, go print Kyle.height. We want to know what Kyle's height is, right? So now when we click run on this little piece of code that we have, down here in the terminal it prints 1.8 because that is the value that we stored in height. And um, Kyle.height retrieves that value that we defined up here. Now this 1.8 value is kind of like assumed so to speak because it's going to be for any instance of person that we make. So if we instead make an instance of person called Carl and we say Carl.height, it's going to print all the same information. And if you want to generalize your classes, now what you can do is you can make these, uh, instead of uh, just assuming these values, you can pass them in as inputs to your initialization function. So let's do that right now. So instead of assuming, we could say uh, we need to take in height, uh, hair, and friends. And then what we can do is uh, those variables will then go down here. So make sure that this variable right here matches the input that you're passing in through the argument. So then uh, we can store it as an attribute in the class. So we'll do that. And then height. And then when we go down here and we want to create a new instance of person, what we can do is we can then pass these attributes in. So we need a height. So let's say uh, Carl is 1.2 meters tall. He's quite short. Uh, he's got blonde hair. And um, his friends, uh, well, uh, poor Carl, he actually has no friends. It's just an empty set. Okay. And then so then when we go and print Carl.height, We've passed these in symbolically into the initialization. So now we can create a person with any height that we want, any hair color, any set of friends, and see that when we print Carl.height now, it's 1.2. And you can also create multiple instances of classes. Like let's say I wanted to make a class called Sally, and uh, we would do that just the same way. Person, so let's say Sally's 1.5 meters tall, uh, has red hair. Um, has uh, one friend, uh, Mandy, I guess. And then so when we print sally.height, or let's say sally.hair, anything really, so you would use the name uh, Sally to retrieve any of her attributes. So we could say sally.hair, and that would print uh, red. And it also prints the 1.2 because we're also printing Carl before that. So that's how you would generalize the inputs of your function. So now let's go ahead and we'll make a few methods for our person class. Now when we edit this person class, it's going to edit for every single instance of uh, person that we've created. So we're going to go down here, back onto the same indentation level that our initial initialization function was on, and you click the definition keyword again. And then let's say we have a function called uh, do math. So this is a method that makes our instance of person do some math. So always remember that self has to be the first argument that you pass in, either if you have no other arguments. Uh, remember that because sometimes I even forget. And then let's say we want to take two numbers in, right? And our do math function will add those two numbers together, a and b, and return our result. So we'll say return a plus b. So that's a, a nice simple function that we have there. And uh, now any instance of person that we create can do math. So for example, if we want to say, uh, print uh, now we have Carl dot and we can call the do math method by doing Carl dot do math and give him two numbers so let's say 10 and 4 and then then so we when we print that it should print 14 because it works just like any other function now it's just a function that's inside of our instance of person and that would also work with Sally so if we wanted to do Sally dot do math and this is just to prove that it has changed it for every single instance of person that we've created now. So let's say we'll, we'll make one more uh, method as an example here. 
So let's say we want to make a method called uh, make friends, and this will edit some of the attributes that we have. So we'll have a def make friends, and this will take an input, so always have self, and then we have a new friend. Um, so let's say it adds one person to our set of friends. And uh, so we will have, this won't return anything, but it will modify the one of the attributes that we already have, which is our set of friends. So we can call self.friends uh, add, and now we're going to add our new friend, okay? And so we can go down here, and let's say um, Carl has made a new friend, his first new friend. Remember, he has no friends as of right now, but we can say friends. Um, and that's that's how you would call that and then we'll pass in the argument so let's say he makes a new friend uh, called Kyle and then so then that that'll run and then we can print afterwards uh, Carl dot friends and we can see that it has uh, changed Carl dot friends and now instead of being an empty set his friend set is now uh, a set that contains Kyle because we added that and we can add a few different people in there so let's say he uh, meets something someone called um, Carlos and then so when we print that friend set Kyle and Carlos will appear in there so that's how you make a simple function or I should say method that edits the attributes of your class how would we go about making a recursive method for a class this is actually a very good question because it there are special ways that you have to call a method from within the class or from within itself uh, when you're defining a class uh, it's not as simple as you may think but there's just a few things to keep in mind and you can keep the hand the hang of it so let's say we want to make a method that recursively creates a list so we'll call it recursive list uh, that takes in first self as one of the arguments, never forget that, uh, of length k. Uh, we also need a variable n to control the, the recursion depth and some array. So this, if you've seen my video on recursion, uh, you will recognize this function. We're just going to copy and paste the same function that we uh, made back there. So you don't need to worry about necessarily how this works. Um, so see that video for more information. But uh, this is, I've copied and pasted exactly the code that we had there. And if we run it, this won't exactly work. Uh, you can see that this is the recursive call right here. The reason being is because uh, this is this recursive list is not a recognized method uh, within the class. Even though we defined it up here, you have to call it as self dot recursive list. And now it'll work perfectly fine uh, when you try to call it. So just keep that in mind whenever you're calling uh, functions from within the class. Um, so this doesn't even need to be itself. I could also call make friends from within this recursive list, and I would need to call self dot make friends. Uh, just make sure that whenever you're calling a function from within a class, self always goes uh, before it, and that's just something that's very important. So if we go down here now and we say Carl dot, and we want Carl to make us a nice recursive list, you can see now that it recognizes recursive list as a method that's inherent to Carl, uh, and we can give it the only argument that it needs is uh, ten. Uh, ooh, I should have actually made these optional arguments, so n equals 0, uh, we'll pass it an empty array. And then so then when we run and print list, what that does is it prints us uh, a nice list with numbers 0 through 9, so it's of length 10, and it generated that recursively, uh, just like we demonstrated in the tutorial from a few weeks ago. So that's pretty cool. There's one more thing that I want to go over about calling functions. So you see that you can always call uh, methods like make friends and recursive list using the instance of that person. So you can never just straight up call uh, make friends. So if I try to just type uh, make friends and just say, um, you know, uh, Carlos or something like that, just it won't work because there's no instance of person that's attached to it. So you see it, it yells at me because make friends is not a function that exists in my program. However, it is a method of a person class, so I need to give it that specific instance of person, so such as Carl or Sally, uh, in order for it to work. The other thing you might notice is that uh, while you can call all of these other methods like recursive list, make friends, whatever, on an instance of person, you cannot call the init method. 
And uh, the reason why that is is because init is a private method, which is a good thing because you really don't want users messing with the initialization. Uh, and that is defined by using these two underscores in front of the name of the function. So that's why you can't call init. So that tells Python, the interpreter, that it automatically does init itself, but that the user would never need to use that function. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, when you're making these methods, because you can make other private methods if you would like. Uh, but for the most part, just making standard methods is okay. And the only private method you absolutely need is this initialization right here. The very last topic that I want to go over relating to classes is inheritance. An inheritance is what you do if you want to make another class that's very similar to person and uses all the same methods, but you want to define some additional methods. So instead of rewriting the entire uh, person class again in this new class, you can tell this new class to inherit from person and then just make more methods off of that. So to, the way you do that is you start by making any other class. So I'm going to make a class called teenager right and to get it to inherit from person you're going to put the parentheses after that and type person which is the class that we want teenager to inherit from so it's just as if we had made a normal class but we've added these parentheses and now our class teenager will have all of the methods that we define for person plus any additional ones that we define down here so we don't need to worry about making an initialization method because it will just use the same exact one from person now we just need to worry about making our new methods, which you would do uh, just normally. So something that teenagers always uh, seems to be keen on doing is growing up and getting taller. So I'm going to make a method called grow up, and uh, we're going to have a self always passed in as one of the arguments of the methods. And um, so we're going to put like a, like a height, so growth, how much the, the our teenager person has grown. So this uh, this new method now belongs to teenager, so we can call it from teenager, but we can't call it from person. Uh, I'll show that in a second, but uh, we can have this mutate our height. So if we have self dot height, uh, now we'll increase by the amount that we've grown. So we'll add growth to that, and uh, that's all we need for our new method. And of course, you can keep going and making as many methods as you would like. So let's make a new instance of uh, now a teenager instead of a person so we'll say Zach for example is an instance of a teenager and we need to pass in a few uh, different initial initializations so let's say uh, his height is 1.6 his hair is brown um, his friends um, oh, don't do that his friends will just leave as an empty set for now because we don't need to worry about that and now we can call um, Zach dot grow up and we can tell him to increase by 0.2 meters so write 0 0.2 and now when we print zack dot height zack dot height and we'll put, slap that into a print statement here we can see that the method that we just made for teenager has increased his height by 0.2 where we originally defined it as 1.6 we told him to grow 0.2 and now he is 1.8 However, if we wanted to call Carl.growup, there's no such uh, method because Carl is an instance of person, not an instance of teenager. So person can only access these methods, whereas teenager can access this one plus all of person's methods. So uh, yeah, so if we tried Carl.growup uh, 0.5, 0 0.5 I should say, you can see that it, it yells in our face because person has no um, has no it says attribute but technically it's a method there's no method for person to grow up and just to prove to you that all of the original methods from person inherit into the teenager method we can say uh, Zach dot make friends and we'll say um, he makes a friend called Dolph or something like that and um, then we can print Zach dot friends and we can say that Dolph is now one of Zach's friends. So all of the methods from person are available to teenager. And that's pretty much how inheritance works in a nutshell. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.